Good evening and welcome to the Magic Parlor of Windsor. For your pleasure and entertainment, we have a wonderful and exceptional magician here who has fooled many with his amazing and extraordinary sleight of hand. Please welcome the magic of Greg Weir. Just, just, uh, yes. So you look. So you believe in ESP? I don't know. Are you like an ESP kind of guy. You look more like an ESPN kind of I guy. I watch it. You? I watch it every night. <laughs> <laughs> ESPN. And you know, have you ever been in an experience where you uh, you're at the house and the phone rings and all of a sudden you know right before they pick up the phone who it is? Have you ever had that experience? Yeah. Well, that's caller ID, but that doesn't. Really <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, I'm gonna let you mix up some cards here. Okay. Are you a good shuffler? You like, do you like know how to shuffle? Nope. Like that? Yeah, or well, yeah, whatever way you like. Like this way? That, yeah, if you feel mangle my cards, well, that's fine. Mangle your cards. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, we'll mix them up just a little bit more, making sure, because, you know, Bill's checking out, making sure there's no chicanery over here. All right, so we're going to have you cut off a little, a small portion of, of cards. All right, but first we're just giving them a couple cuts first, too, and make sure it's all good. All right, just cut off, like, less than half the deck. Like maybe 15 or so, like that, okay? And then cut this one back in half. More or less, that have to be exact. And then take these for you, and we'll send these over to Bill over there, okay? Okay. Now I have to sit down because this is good. I have to see this myself, which is why I wear glasses. <laughs> take the cards in your hand and then spread them out like this. All right? And then just mix them around, just shuffle them, mix the cards so, so that you have them in different order than, they, than I gave them to you, just so that wherever you feel comfortable, you as well. Yeah? <laughs> Perfect. You got it? I got it. All right, cool. All right, clear your mind. That was quick. Some people are... <laughs> and I want you to look at the cards. Just scan all the cards and, and, and see the first card that I see. You have a club. I think I see it's not a five. It's a, the four clubs. Can you put that down? Um, let's see. I think I see... Um, ooh, now he's good. Um, there's a... I, I see a, a, a two hearts. Me? Sorry. Wow. Wow. Seven of diamonds? <laughs> wow, that's like a good program. Okay. Really? Wow. Uh, I see a, um, what have we got there? Three clubs? Perfect. Wow. cards. Okay, so. Four out of five. You can shuffle your cards up, Bill. You take a look at them. All right, good. Yeah. Okay. Um, spread out the cards in your hand. So I see maybe after um, uh, six diamonds. You have a six diamonds? I do. Cool. Yeah. You have a. Um, an ace of spades? Yeah. Cool. Oh. Ooh, it's getting tricky now. Um, really? I also see, um, is, it a, is it a red card? Do you have a couple of red cards left? Uh, there's, one card, yeah. there's one card throwing me off. I, do you have a joker in there somewhere? Okay, that's the... Oh. <laughs> just losing my mind. <laughs> it's just possible, you know, based on, as they know. You've been there before, ain't you? Been there. Okay. <laughs> Luckily, I find it. <laughs> you find it again? You yeah. just place it and find it again? Yeah. I like when that happens. So, you had a Ace of Spades. You have a, um, a five, of, five of Hearts? Yeah. Cool. Oh, How are we wow. doing? Okay, a couple cards left? I just got one. Oh, you're not trusting me. You're keeping the hands yeah. down below. Yeah. <laughs> ah, that's the way they come to this party. Huh? Where's the trust? I guess we just erased all that with the last two acts that were here, right? Um, really? So, I see some... Ace of spades, baby, the five of hearts, um, the nine of spades? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. I'll let you go shuffle this up this for a minute. Okay, just mix these up. Okay. Perfect. Hmm. <laughs> My dog's favorite trick. His first one is fake frisbee throw. He loves that. <laughs> Second one, squirrel. And the third one, is that. <laughs> Okay, yeah, he messed too. the car curtain. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you comfortable with that? No, no, not yet. <laughs> I think I mix those cards up some more. Yeah. Yeah, make sure they're fully shuffled, because otherwise, you know. Good. And bang them on the table, make sure that they don't. Perfect. Because we're going to use this deck. I don't need that. <laughs> I don't need that kind of attitude. <laughs> when you come to my house, we don't put you. Know, my cards and my rules. <laughs> What the hell am I going to admit? We mixed up the cards like that. <laughs> Find something again. What the hell is he thinking? Here, make sure that box is empty. <laughs> so, give him something to do. We're good. All right. 
so you know that we saw before that there was this uh, uh, this thing with the three cards where people bet on it. Well, we're going to try something a little different, but we'll do it with, with less cards. So we'll take a look at the Ace of Diamonds, right? Hold out your finger, like a little pincher there. All right, now if I had to bet you right now a hundred dollars that that's the uh, Ace of Diamonds, would you uh, would you take that bet? Yeah. Really? Well, use someone else's money. <laughs> <laughs> use someone else's money. Right, let's take the second one. If I took the Ace of Hearts, now if I put the Ace of Hearts underneath the Ace of Diamonds and I took this one back, would you still, you know the Ace of Diamonds, but now you know where the Ace of Hearts is. Right. right now, if I went again and I shift it up one more time, would you know for sure which one is the Ace of Hearts and which is the Ace of Diamonds? Yeah. Which I one, think. What do you think? The top one, Ace of Hearts. And the bottom? Ace of Diamonds. That's why you should never play with a guy who brings a second deck. Take a look. That's why we need to use the second deck. I know those TV magic cards I bought way back when. <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here in our bag of tricks. Oh. Oh, I didn't, before when we got that thing right, I forgot to do, this is a victory ESP dance when I get all the kids. <laughs> I get them all right, there you go. Oh, yes. I, like I do some of this victory for myself, dance. I don't know if you guys yeah. <laughs> Stole it from my kids' stuff. Uh, Did that come out on that egg? It, uh, yeah, like <laughs> Oh, man. So, I used to get involved in magic also, you know, in the summertime, I'd go down to see my, uh, my grandmother down in Florida. And she used to take me down to the Sears, uh, it was sort of a strip mall. They take me to the strip mall, and, and she would actually drop me off. There's a little magic store in the corner called Paul's Diamonds Magic Shop, down in a small little strip mall, whatever. And then after that, she would, you know, take me to uh, this cafeteria, which all I remember is a lot of green jello. You had to have to, there always seemed to be a lot of green jello, right? So, so what happened is that though we got to talking with my grandmother about grandma. If you had a superpower, what would it be? And she goes, you know, as you get older and stuff, I probably would have said. Superpower, you know, I mean, super strength because you know, these jars and stuff is so hard to open. I mean, even the child safety um, medicines things, I have a hard time opening. I have a hard time opening them too, as well. She says, So I, I thought to think about it. I said, Gee, pick one of the, the, the quarters. Do you like? Perfect. Make sure now, now they're made out of uh, tin and nickel. So take a look and see if it's, it's one of those, t you know, those tricky coins that they bend and, and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. no, it's all good. That's all good. Okay. So if I could tell you that, you know, I started to think about it, and I used to I wear my Clark Kent outfit today, um, <laughs> that if you could actually take, the, you know, the, these coins and actually just use your imagination and, and make it look like it's bending, it's more of an optical illusion, right? But if you could use your powers and believe the magic, why don't you? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Wow. That's for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So now you got all these, t it's like you went to the dollar store with all this stuff I've given you here. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no card and a bet quarter. <laughs> what else? We got some rubber bands. How about some rubber bands? Those are always good. Yeah. I think I have enough rubber bands. All right, examine that one, examine that one over here. Looking good? Right. Yeah. Stretch it this way, you can get your aerobic exercise. Perfect. I I'd shoot it across the Well, you can shoot it across the <laughs> I mean, It mixes the cards up, but like that again, shoot it right out. Okay. okay. <laughs> I love that. Now, years ago, you know, there's a great um, illusionist who actually started out in vaudeville. His name is Eric Weiss. It's not the name that most people remember him by. His actual stage name is Harry Houdini. And they made a movie with Tony Curtis in it, and you've heard about him. And one of the things that, that people don't realize, he, he was a vaudeville magician, but he would actually learn to do... Um, Escape artist, but you don't know the, the genesis of why he, you know, he did it. Some people said his father was a locksmith, and that's maybe what happened. But actually, what happened is more important. It's, it's a bit like the question, are you happy or married? He would go home at night, you know, and he wouldn't want to go out drinking with his buddies. And then he'd get there, and she'd lock the front door. She'd lock the back door, the window on both sides. But he's an escape artist, and he would learn how to go through the... Through the, oh. through the oh. Wait a minute, let's go back to the So remember, she said... Harry, we don't spend enough quality time anymore. Oh, honey, stop whining. <laughs> he would do like that. <laughs> so he would eventually, you know, migrate from doing things with, with ropes and things. He would actually go into, you know, more sophisticated escape artistry. And he'd end up doing things with, uh, with metal, too. So he, you know, they, he would lock, they would lock him in Scotland Yard and escape. And, you know, all you had to do is that, realize that there's a little small magnet right there, which just pops right through. I don't know. And you're probably wondering, well, how does this work? Or um, It's really very simple. These are special um, rubber bands you can buy from Japan. 
They, they have little small magnets inside of them. The magicians like magnets, by the way. And you just have to pop the magnet open and then put oh. it back together. But of course, that, you have to make sure that the rubber band goes back together. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Last time. You take the, the two rubber bands. And, and here's the cool part. If you see, actually, these rubber bands also work in such a way that you can meld them back together into one single strand. Mm. Whoa. Oh, <laughs> Look at it. Man, so much, so much fun, so little time, huh? <laughs> All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, this would be good. Um, we got time for uh, like one or two more? Okay, good. Um, so, my wife and I went to um, to Italy for our 30th anniversary uh, this last year. We went to uh, Rome, Venice, Florence, right, and Tuscany. If you like the Tuscany part, a lot of a lot of wine. But. Uh, one of the things that was really cool is that, you know, we were going into to souvenir shopping because you obviously, when you, you, know, you get these kind of things, um, you, you obviously want to walk around and see what they have. And I think, Paul, that uh, someone gave me a souvenir that, uh, Sandy, can you uh, get, it's in his pocket, please. Oh. Nope. <laughs> okay, we got to fire the heck. Yeah. <laughs> But, but it's interesting because, you know, you walk around and so in, in, in Florence they have the Statue of David. It, it's beautiful and of course they, anything possible you can imagine with David, they have there. They have, you know, David magnets, David things that you don't want to put in your living room. <laughs> All sorts of different David things, right? But, but, you know, one of those stores, I'd be seeing it was a 30th anniversary. I was a bit romantic and I started to think, you know, as I walking back, I saw this little notebook and it reminded me of my wife and I decided to <laughs> don't ever look him straight in the eye. Right. <laughs> um, but I thought it was really cool. So we were walking in a plaza where they had you know, people drinking uh, Prosecco, uh, lots of activity in, in the plaza square about two blocks from where the actual uh, uh, statue is housed. It's, just it's stored in this little tiny museum of all places they could put it. It's, it's not in a really big place, but it's very charming. And so we were walking around. And as, I, as we're coming into the, um, the plaza, I hear, pss, pss. I said, I didn't think they had snakes. I thought they were here in Italy. He said, Signore, I have a tradizione, para ti, un bel de uro. So I said, no, you know, I said, okay, that yeah, seems like, you know, reasonable, right? And um, so he, he, he started, he's one of those character, you know, charcoal artist kind of guys. He was going in here, and he, and he goes, no, I pray the little brood, the desert is cerrado. I said, okay, he says, it's uh, una ocasión especial. So a special occasion, right? So it sounds a little Spanish because I'm not very good at Italian. Just so you guys check that in the editing tab. But um, one of the things that was cool about that is I, I said, well, it seems like a special occasion tonight, right? So let's try that. You know, let's have a. Um, I have. I don't know if you know that the, um, the there's a app that's called the Notepad app on on your phones. You could write little notes to it, honey to do list and things I've never done and I don't plan to do list and <laughs> things of that nature, right? Yeah. But they also, you know, they have uh, different ones. So one of the ones they have is um, celebrities. It's one of them they have m top 100 movies and so forth. So um, list of 100 numbers between 1 and 100. What's the number you like between 1 and 100? 17. 17. Is that the uh, age that you... Left high school or? Uh, <laughs> birthday. Oh, birthday. All right, birthday's good. 17, all right. Um, that's a cool number. So, like I said, they have a little notepad, notepad thing here, right? See? Now, I don't know if you need your glasses with me. I have to enlist Bill's uh, eyesight here. I'll go to celebrities, right? And, and can you see what it says at, at number 17? Tom Hanks. And take a look on either side of it. Is there any, is, is it his name duplicated above or below? You can scroll through and make sure. No, it and that was a totally random number. We didn't rehearse that or anything? No, uh-uh. Well, here's when you realize, you know, in a southern moment in May, that you realize that there are things that will always leave you with a sense of wonder. And as I opened up this book, he had only drawn one page in the whole book. And the one page he drew was Tom Hanks. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. That's true. Yeah. One more, and then we'll blow this popsicle stand. Okay. <laughs> so, one of the things that I used to love to do with my dad, it's a lot of my magic is actually even tied in real life moments that you remember, right? And my dad would love to take me on, on Saturday afternoon in Pelham, New York, 
down to this uh, local Daibi movie theater, and they had Creature Feature that day. And you could watch The Wolfman and Dracula <laughs> and cheesy movies about the blob and, and other things like that, right? And, you know, one of the movies that we saw, which I really love, is called The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> and, and this is sort of interesting because this is about some aliens that arrive in Southern California, and it's about 10 years before the Mexicans get there. So it's a pretty progressive film. Just oh. Okay, too soon? I know, just too soon. <laughs> and I didn't make any issue one jokes. That's all important. Okay. So here, here, this is what would happen. So in a small town, what would happen is the alien that arrived in town, and they put these little pea pods that look like these giant Del Monte commercial pea pods next to the guy's bed, or the girl's bed, and they fell asleep at night. It would, it would suck out their essence and they would create a replica and everyone in the, in the actual you know, town would be turning into aliens, right? Mm. That's the kind of cheesy movies we used to like to go to eating Juji Fruits and, and, and Coca-Cola. Right? So here's what happens. So the alien is represented by the ace, arrives in southern town, California. Beep, boop, boop, boop. I wrote that part myself. Thank you. <laughs> and in the small town they have eight citizens, only eight. And they all represent the kings. I mean, they're, they're obviously women as well. But you actually only have eight citizens in the small town. And it doesn't really bode very well for the, uh, the local citizens. So little Johnny goes down to tell the politicians, oh, my God, there's aliens coming. And, of course, politicians have been sleeping for years. <laughs> and he becomes the first alien, which is not good, right? All of a sudden, Orson Welles shows up on the set thinking there's a free buffet. And he also <laughs> becomes an alien, which is not looking good. The third guy uh, is Juan. And Juan is the local lawn maintenance guy in, in town. And he goes to touch the pod and shoots out a little spike and pierces him through the, to the heart. It was tragic and gory and badly done. Um, but they, they interviewed the police the next day and said, well, what happened? He said, it's the worst case of hole in one I've ever seen. Oh. Oh. Get out of the system now. <laughs> All right, so that, they went for help, right? And they finally go tell Joe Biden. And Joe Biden's wondering, how come the wall isn't built yet? And he's still uh, <laughs> sleepy as ever. So, that, so unfortunately, as it goes, they go to tell the rest of the town members and we start to become one. Two, they all start to become aliens, unfortunately. Oh. It starts to get a little scary now because it's the kind of movie where the good guys don't necessarily win. <laughs> oh my God. If, wow. if you don't look out too soon, everybody in town will be <laughs> falling asleep. <laughs> and then, of course, this is the movie where the bad guys win, ladies and gentlemen, an invasion of the body snatchers. Oh. Wow. I have to get my wife to her meeting point with the mothership next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Very good.